Hey everyone, this is Eric Thor and this is day number 45 without being able to go to the hairdresser. Please, somebody save me from my hair. <laughs> Anyways, today I want to talk about five sensor stereotypes. And I want to talk about sensor bashing. I know a lot of you guys have eventually found yourself in the habit of sensor bashing. I don't know if you're an intuitive or not, but if you're an intuitive, it's very easy, very tempting to play the sensor card. It's, oh, they don't get me because they are sensors. They don't understand because they are sensors. They are, I dislike them because they are sensors. It's that easy habit and it comes up in Facebook groups and in chats. I see it all the time. I see people just jumping the gun. Immediately if you disagree with somebody or if you think somebody is mistyped, it's so easy to go, they're mistyped because they must be censors. Oh, you're a conservative. Oh, you're a Republican. You must be a censor. You know, it's that, oh, if you're different from me, you have to be a censor. And that's very inaccurate and very dangerous and it leads to misunderstanding. Now, the MBTI is all about understanding and better getting to know other personnel types. So if you're using the MBTI to bash sensors, you're using it wrong. You're not learning about people, you're not understanding people, you're alienating and isolating yourself from people through the use of sensor bashing. Anyways, let's get on with it. Let's get to point number one. Point number one, sensors are dumb. The number one stereotype I hear about sensors is that they have low IQ, low intelligence, and I understand where this is coming from. Sensors approach political issues, life, decision making very differently from intuitives. And I think when we assume that, or when we don't understand how another person is reasoning or thinking about something, we assume it's because they are dumb. We can also look at rate of learning. I think intuitives learn faster than sensors. I think intuitives are faster at absorbing new concepts and new information than sensors. And that's all good and fine. However, there's an issue and here's where sensors are more intelligent. Sensors might learn slower initially, but once they're into something, once they're invested in something, they learn faster than intuitives. Yeah, what tends to happen is this kind of a drop-off effect. So when learning about or being introduced to a new concept, intuitives immediately start spinning. Wow, this is super fascinating. Wow, how does this work? I wanna think about this more. I wanna discuss this from different perspectives. However, there is a drop-out effect. Over time, as a topic becomes more and more familiar, intuitives lose interest in the topic. That means intuitives gradually drop interest in the topic while sensors begin to become more invested in it. So this is also applicable to academia. While you think that, okay, intuitives dominate all academic pursuits, all like, uh, people with master's degrees are intuitives, that's often not the case a lot of the time. Intuitives, they're great in high school and they learn very fast, but they start dropping off and they start feeling bored and they don't hand in their assignments on time and they don't have enough discipline and they're not focused enough and they get distracted and they change field of study and they end up somewhere completely different. And the sensor, on the other hand, finishes their study, hands in their assignment, gets their degree and is promoted and is ended up on a higher position or a higher educated role than intuitive because they followed through on their field of study because they had more discipline, more thick skin. Point number two, the world would be better if intuitives were in charge. Okay, first there's a notion in the world today that sensors dominate popular culture, politics, leadership, management, business, and every single dimension, while intuitives are kind of the underdogs. And here's the idea. The idea is that intuitives would make better leaders, intuitives would make the world better, intuitives would change things that were wrong in the world. The problem with this line of thinking is a lot of the political leaders that people idolize today, like Bernie Sanders, are actually censors. A lot of the types that we talk about in a positive light and idolize are censors, mistyped as intuitives. We have a lot of people that we actually look up to because they are censors. We uh, often appreciate sensory leadership and censors in leadership positions because they are better at managing people. What I've noticed is intuitives have a problem with leadership and the problem is intuitives are very independent. 
while intuitives get really engaged by their own projects and are really good at working with their own ideas and their own systems and their own methodologies and all those things, they're very bad at uh, teaching and working with a group. So intuitives can start up companies and can come up with new ideas and innovations, but they often struggle to scale up and expand. They often build a tight-knit organization with themselves in the center point. They can't delegate, they can't manage, they can't uh, deal with high amounts of data. They make everything so complicated that, that it's impossible to work with on a higher level or in a more practical perspective. So while something is really fun and original and amusing and interesting, it's often uh, not going to sell to a wider populace because people don't understand the idea or it's not practical enough to be implemented in today's society. It's uh, far out there. It might be relevant 20 years from now, but at the moment, it's not going to work. So there is a reason why sensors tend to make better leaders and tend to do better in higher up organization. Point number three. If I dislike a person, it must be that because they are sensors. I see this in a lot of Facebook discussions and Facebook groups and in also real life. People don't always like each other. People don't always understand each other. And if you don't understand another person, it's a good chance, uh, chances are you don't like them as well. We tend to like people we agree with. We tend to dislike people we disagree with. That tends to be a natural process of how things go. We relate to people that are like us and we dislike people that are unlike us. However, the MBTI is meant to help people better connect with each other. And if you use the MBTI properly, if you listen to sensors, if you have discussions with them, if you hear them out, if you listen to their thought process, if you can see things from their point of view, you can also befriend them and understand them. And you can also start to relate to them. So what you want to do is you want to think about how can I connect with sensors? How can I better talk to them? How can I make myself understood to them? A problem with the sensor intuitive divide today is we don't know how to talk with the set language of a sensor. Sensors, they tend to look at decision making and uh, information from a completely different perspective. While sensors will look at decision making from a personal level. How does this impact me, my job, my financial situation, taxes? How does this impl uh, influence me? Uh, intuitives, they tend to look at things from a big picture perspective. How does this influence society, the economy, the global uh, state across the world, peace and conflict, and all those things. These are two equally valid ways of understanding and making a decision. Economy is an abstract concept that can apply to individuals and to a personal situation. But a person's job or losing a job or thought of losing your financial situation or paying more in taxes can also influence the economy on a larger scale. So if you can look at and understand both these kind of point of views and if you can also learn to think of decision making from a personal perspective or from an individual perspective, that can also be something very positive. And Learn to talk the language of sensors by learning to think about things from a practical point of view as well as an abstract point of view. Stereotype number four, sensors are yaks. This stereotype is quite interesting and it comes from the fact that sensors are generally more assertive people. When I do personality tests, I find that the people who test the sensors also tend to be more confident in themselves and less neurotic. They have higher self-esteem and a higher sense of self-worth. When you're a sensor, you believe in yourself more. You are more upbeat, you have more energy, you have more passion, you trust yourself, your own decision making. You are less likely to second guess yourself. And I think this uh, leads to uh, a feeling in the intuitive world that I am being bullied by sensors. Sensors, they are so confident and they are so assertive and so aggressive about what they want and what they think, so certain of themselves in comparison to me, myself, as an intuitive. And because I doubt myself, and because I question myself, I, because I am neurotic, because I doubt myself, and because they don't, that can create this kind of attention or this feeling that uh, I'm an easy target. I think the doubt of the intuitive also leads to a feeling of alienation and estrangement from sensors, you know? Uh, while well, an sensor would talk in words like, I believe, or this is true, or I know this for a fact, intuitives say, I have this theory, but it could also be like that, or it could also be like this. And 
this sounds more uncertain, this sounds more vague, it sounds more speculative. And it makes sense that uh, censors wouldn't trust you on it. It makes sense that censors would go, uh, I will go with the person that seems really sure of themselves. I will go with the person who really seems to know what they're talking about. I will go with the person who seems to have their facts straight. This is just a fact of life. You should seek to aspire to have the confidence of a censor in spite of the fact that you are a creative person. As a creative person or as an intuitive, learn to love your creativity in your own thought process, in your own ideas, in your own point of views. Learn to uh, play with different ideas, but still to trust in yourself and your process. And that's going to work itself out. Point number five. Censors vote conservative, intuitives vote liberal. I think we're thinking about this backwards. I think conservative people and liberal people are far more shaped by their personal circumstance than they like to believe. I've noticed that a lot of people who are in a certain position will switch from being conservative to being liberal based on their income or based on what's happened to them recently on their personal circumstance. I noticed that in times of negative change, like during a global lockdown or a dropping economy, people become more conservative. And I've noticed that during times of economic boom and progress and lots of things are happening and new innovation is coming out, people become more liberal. That's just how society seems to develop. During times of negative change, we become more security oriented, more focused on law and order, more focused on stability, taxes and paying our bills. When we have a lot of money and we're doing better at our job and we get promoted and we uh, get new technology, we become more liberal. We start thinking about what's next, what opportunities could I have after that? And what could I buy then? What could I get that? And um, that's just how people seem to develop. So those were my five stereotypes about censors. What is your favorite stereotype about censors? Post your comment down below. And if you like this video, if you agree with this message, feel free to like and share this with other people with intuitive bias. Let's hope we can change their mind. Let's hope we can change the debate from censors versus intuitives to censors and intuitives.